Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the DMAX function to, in this case, show the last order date on the customer form in Microsoft Access. So when you open up a customer's form, you want to quickly, at a glance, see what the maximum date of their last order was. And we'll use the DMAX function for that, and I'll show you how in this video. Today's question comes from Elisa in Montgomery, Alabama. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She asks, I'm using your awesome free tech help customer template. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there a way that I can quickly see the date of the customer's last order from the customer form without having to open the order form? Well, of course, Elisa. You just have to learn how to use something called the DMAX function. So here I am in the awesome tech help free template. This is the customer template she's talking about. You can grab a copy of this yourself if you want to. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below in the templates section. We've got a basic customer list here. And if you click on one of these guys, you open up the customer record. What Elise is talking about is in order to see this person's last order, you got to open up the order form. Now, these are generally sorted so that the most recent orders are first. But it'd be nice to just see right here. If you have an order, what the order date is, what the last order date was. That's handy if you're on a sales call. You open up the customer's record and you can see, boom, their last date that they placed an order was two months ago. Okay, without having to open this up and look through here. So, in order to do that, we're going to use a function called the DMAX function. Now, the DMAX function takes two or optionally three bits of information. What is the field you're looking for? Where is the table or query that you're looking in? And then how is optionally some criteria? For example, this customer ID. So for example, this says DMAX order date from order T. And yes, those have to be inside of quotes like that. That says, find me the largest order date from the order table. There's no how, so it's just going to go into the order table and find the largest order date, the most recent order that's in your system for all customers. Okay, now this one says, find the largest order date in the order table where the customer ID equals three. All right, so whatever customer happens to be customer three, find his largest order date. I know my font keeps getting smaller as this line gets longer. <laughs> this next one says, find the order date, the maximum order date from the order table where the customer ID equals whatever the customer ID happens to be on the current form. So that customer ID there on the very end gets treated as a field name. And if you're working with a form or even in a query result, it'll say, go get the current customer ID and put it here. That little ampersand is for string concatenation. It puts two strings together. If you've never done concatenation before, go look in the links section down below the video and watch my concatenation video. So that's what we're going to use right there, that last one, in order to get the largest order date from the order table where the customer ID equals the currently open customer. Let's go put it in the form. All right, let's go to design view. And you can put it anywhere you want to. I'm just going to put it up top here, right up top. Let's go to design. Let's grab a text box right there. Drop it over here somewhere. All right, now it's unbound. So we're going to double click on this guy. Unbound means it's not getting its data from the underlying table or query, which if you click here in the form properties, you'll see is customer T. So this is not a value in the customer T. This is a calculated field that we're going to work with right here directly in the form. That means you can't change its value. And I like to do this with fields you can't change the value. I like to make them gray. This just kind of visually signifies to the user, hey, you can't change that. Kind of like I did with the customer ID over here. Okay, so let's change the label. We'll put in here last order. All right. Maybe make that black so you can actually read it. Let's go to black. Okay. And we'll slide this over here like so. Now, what do we do with this box? Well, let's go find the control source. Actually, first, let's give it a name. It's text 30 right now. I don't like text 30. Let's make sure we name all of our objects, right? Let's call this last order date. Okay. Now, the control source is where the magic happens. And we've already actually typed it in. All right, I'm going to zoom in Shift F2 so you can see what I'm typing here. All right, this is going to be equals Dmax. What am I Dmaxing? The order date from the order T, comma, where the customer ID equals the current customer ID on the order form. 
Okay, and that's it. That's all you need. Hit OK. That puts it right there in the control source. Save it. All right, let's close that. Let's close this. Let's open it back up again. And there we go. 114 2021. Let's go in here and make sure. Yep, there it is. Let's put another order in the system. Here's one from today, 212. All right, and uh, put it in for me. Put a product in here, blah, 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 blah. Let's close it. Now, this won't refresh unless you leave the form and come back to it. All right, and now you can see 212 is the latest order. And this isn't sorted in any way. I didn't sort this. So you'd have to come in here and go to the end. Okay, but that's a nice handy way when you open the customer form to see that. Can you do it so when you close this, this refreshes? Yeah, but it involves a little more programming. Members, I'll show you how to do that in the extended cut. Okay, a couple more things to mention about DMAX though. First thing, remember if your criteria involves a date, then you have to make sure that you enclose that date inside of hashtags or octothorps or pound signs, or whatever you want to call them, right? This DMAX says, go to the order table, find me the largest order total where the order date equals January 1st, 2021. So in other words, for that date, find the largest order total, okay? And since the date is the criteria, we have to make sure that we enclose it inside of octothorps. Hashtags, what do you want to call them? Here's another one. Now, if your criteria involves a text string, you have to make sure you enclose it in either double, double quotes or single quotes. All right, so this one says, find me the largest order total from the order T where the state equals New York. So of all of my orders from New York, find the largest one. Now, I highlighted the single quotes there because they're difficult to see when they're next to the double quotes, but I don't like using single quotes. I know in SQL Server and stuff like that, you have to use them, but in Access, I try to use double, double quotes. So that becomes this. Okay, that puts double quotes inside of double quotes. I know it seems confusing. I have a whole video on this. It's called the double, double quote problem. Go watch that. I'll put a link down below. And the reason why I don't like single quotes is because single quotes can sometimes be found inside of like last names, for example. All right, there's a last name where there's a single quote in it. So that won't work. That will cause a problem with your DMAX. And then that fixes the problem. You can also use ands and ors and things like that in your criteria. Like this one says, find me the largest order total from the order T where the state equals New York or the state equals Florida. So that kind of stuff is allowed as well. I cover DMAX and a lot more of the D functions in detail in my Expert 29 class. There's a whole bunch of them. There's the granddaddy of them all, DLOOKUP, which is my favorite one. There's DSUM, DCOUNT, DAVERAGE, DMAX, MIN, FIRST, LAST. There's a whole ton of them. And I spend two hours, over two hours, going over all these different functions in Access Expert 29. Want to learn more about DMAX? Well, in the extended cut for members, I show you how to calculate the days since the last order for each order in a query. For example, you've got your list of order dates, January 5th, January 10th, January 17th, and so on. In a query, you want to quickly see how many days were there between this order and the one before it. So you can see the one on the 10th, there was five days since the one before that, and so on. We'll cover that in the extended cut. Extended cut is for silver members and up. Remember, members get access to all of my previous extended cut videos as well. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. 
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.